Welcome to the Ken Hill Podcast. Once again, I appreciate you tuning in. And, and if you're tuning in, I hope it's because you want to be a better writer. And, and really, that's what the podcasts are, are all about. You know, they're, they're my attempt at, at um, synthesizing all of the information that I've put together and all the writers that, um, that I work with, whether it's from a new writer up to somebody that's won championships, and being able to put it in a form that I can get it uh, communicated to you in a, in a simpler fashion to help you with your writing. And, you know, I, I, I appreciate you tuning in um, to be that, that go-to person, that reference uh, for you and, and hopefully for our sport. This podcast is, a lot of it is because there is so much um, misinformation or disinformation or basically bullshit um, that's out there. And, um, you know, part of what I want to do with these podcasts is to have, um, is, is to erase that and to have information out there that's clear and concise and no BS and just absolutely lays it out there and explains it, uh, explains it well. So that's what this one's about. And this podcast probably isn't going to be that long because it doesn't need to be that long. And instead, what I'd like to do is make sure that, that we're under, understanding uh, what the podcasts um, in, in total are there for, right? It's really this gigantic library of writing information. And you'll see at the end of the podcast how we, uh, how we point back to that. So, all right, let's jump into it. This podcast starts with a story. The story goes is uh, I was working with one of my favorite writers, Valentin DeBees, uh, this summer at uh, UMC. And I'd worked with Valentin a few years ago and a huge fan of Valentin, just one of the most professional writers out there, incredibly fast. Um, and, and Valentin is, he is not afraid to challenge me um, or make me explain myself or show me or show him why I'm having him do things. And so I really love working with Valentin and um, I really hope that, uh, that hope good things happen uh, with him and his writing. And I was working with a writer that day, and the writer was a very fast club racer. And this writer had a problem of not respecting direction, right? Not respecting the exit. Tried to go in the corner too fast, uh, misses apex, too much lean angle, can't get on the throttle, runs wide, you know, bike issues, all this stuff. And as we got that on video and we got explaining it to him, he was, he was struggling committing to it. So I was working with Valentin on something else and uh, Valentin would come in for a break. And so I said, Valentin, when you're writing, I said, what, what is your singular thought when you're writing? And Valentin says, well, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I have a lot of thoughts, but I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean. So I broke it down further. I said, Valentin, when you're writing, what matters most? And he said, well, he started to explain it in a little bit of a longer way saying, well, I want to have the bike in the right place on the entry. And, and I said, so, so I said, basically you're looking for bike placement, right? Exit when you can be on the throttle. And he goes, yes, that's it. That's it. And so I said, you're not, you're not thinking about anything else. And he goes, what else is there to think of? There is nothing else. And it was good to hear that from Valentin, right? So in other words, bike placement, exit direction, when, when the bike is slowed and pointed, th that's all that matters. That's all this, all the, all he's thinking is when can I be accelerating? And it was great for my student to hear this because it, it gave him a little bit of permission then to back up and respect the exit. So this podcast, right? We've, we've, if you, if you've been riding on the track, on the street or racing at any, any time, no doubt that you've heard these phrases, right? We have slow in, fast out, point and shoot, or smooth is fast. We, we've heard these, these cute little catchphrasey things. And when Valentin explained what we were trying to, what he was trying to accomplish, the, the, the student said, oh, so you want me to be slow in and fast out? And Valentin looks at him and goes, no, I want you to be fast in and fast out, right? Because that's, that's really what it boils down to. And if you look at all of these statements, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into depth with, uh, with each one of them here in a second, 
when you look at all of these statements, they're very, very simple. They're actually super easy. It, what they mean is, don't rush your exit. Pause. Don't rush your exit. So when we go back, let's, let's skip back a little bit. Where does our lap time come from, right? Where, where, you know, where does a good lap time come from? And the lap time comes from the, essentially the rider that has the most positive acceleration the longest, the rider that is using wide open throttle the longest. That's where the lap time comes from. So this goes back to my order of the sport, goes back to my fundamentals. This is why bike placement comes first, right? We need to have the bike in a position to accelerate, pause, for the longest amount of time. So all of these statements refer back to let's, let's, not, rush, let's, let's not rush your exit, right? Don't rush your exit. So when we look at these, right? Slow in, fast out. Well, slow in, fast out simply means go in the corner slowly, so you can get a good exit. Okay, great, wonderful. I, I get it. And I, I actually very much like this approach. But do you think that that's what they're doing in MotoGP or Moto2 or World Superbike or Moto America? No. no, no one's going slow in, hell no. Instead, what they're doing is they're trying to get the bike in as quickly as they can without ruining their exit. So what that means for you is, let's not get into the corner over 100% of you or your bike's ability, pause, that ruins your exit. And the thing that's so important about this is, we need to establish our exit first so we can manipulate our entry. And, but if we don't know what a good exit is, and we'll get to that in a second, if we don't know what a good exit is, then, then we can't manipulate the entry. We can't put the entry first. So slow in and fast out. Great to build on, great to build on, but at some point it is going to limit you. And no one in MotoGP or Moto America or, or World Superbike is going slow in and, and fast out. No, they're going fast in and fast out. Again, I've looked at all the data I've looked at data acquisition for these guys. It's a rider that gets to the slowest point and away from the slowest point as quickly as possible. Done. Over with. Right? That's it. So point and shoot. Point and shoot is near the same. Meaning it's respecting where the bike needs to be slowed and pointed so you can shoot it for a good exit. Right? It's a reminder. I have to have the bike pointed before I can shoot it. I think with point and shoot, this goes back to a little bit of what we were talking about is once, once you've memorized what a good exit is, we have, we have to start with that. So one, right, is it an exit corner? Am I building throttles? I go past the apex. How am I getting to my exit apex? When am I getting to wide open throttle? Um, when am I getting to my tack out point or my shift point or whatever it is? That process starts first because that is what lasts longest, right? That's what matters. And only then can we start to manipulate the entry, right? Pushing our boundaries on the entry. And then once we know that we've, we've ruined our exit, we've, we've rushed our exit, then we have to be able to back up. So point and shoot is, is, is very simple. It's, it's a reminder of, I have to have the bike pointed so I can shoot it. It's not going in so slow right? No, it's getting in again, just like slow in and fast out, right? How about fast in, fast out? Fast in, fast out, but we have to respect where the bike has to be slowed and pointed so you can have that great exit. Then we have this great one, and this is one that uh, the, the smooth is fast. <sighs> so I heard on somebody else's podcast uh, this summer that he referred to a rider's technique as smooth as fast. Smooth as fast, right? He's a smooth as fast rider. What the hell does that mean, right? Again, that's one of these little cutie catchphrase things that he's a he's as smooth as fast. I get it, I get it. But just because you're smooth doesn't mean you're fast. You know, the best riders in the world are constantly pushing boundaries. And sometimes that's not smooth, right? What this really means is having a proactive thought process. So 
What this means is being able to make whatever decision you need to be able to make to get through the corner as quickly as possible, but still have your brain ahead of the bike, right? Having proactive techniques. Because when, we, when we're reactive, right? When we're reactive, well, we're typically late and then we're typically very abrupt. So we don't have the opportunity to be smooth when we're late. And what this is simply a reminder of smooth is fast, this really is just a, a simple reminder of let's be proactive with our thought process. It doesn't mean that you're going to be slow. It just means that we're going to have a proactive thought process. I guess we really need to talk about renaming this because what this really means, again, is being proactive to be able to make the most out of your situation, to be able to maximize it with proactive, deliberate techniques. And, and really, it's more like fast is proactive. Fast is smooth. That, that's more like what it, what it should be um, instead, of the other, instead of the other way around. So, all right. I'm not going to beat these up anymore because they don't need to be. These are, these are all super, super simple. And the summary is simple. Slow in and fast out or, or point and shoot or smooth is fast. Overall, it's a reminder to not rush direction, and it's a reminder to have proactive techniques, right? Being able to access proactive techniques. Applying proper riding fundamentals, right, starts with this bike placement. As soon as we understand where the bike needs to be positioned so you can accelerate longer, oh my gosh, it's just going to make your, it's going to make your riding experience so much better. And that's what allows you then to, to adjust your entry as well as adjust your exit based on whatever that corner, corner radius is. All right, there you go. One last thing. We talked about the podcasts and what the podcasts are really about. Right? The podcasts are, are giving you access to what the best writers in the world are doing and, and making it so we, we have more of a common language um, between all of us, all of us writers. You know, I, I constantly am striving to, to make my communication better. Um, I'm blessed that I've got a great team behind me that that is that is constantly challenging me and and um, and basically calling me out on my crap um, or or stressing to me that I can make things um, make things better. And you know the podcasts are again are my way of of getting that information out to you. So if you go back to the podcast for this topic, right? For these these phrases that we have, they're covered in depth. In many, many, in, in many of these podcasts, and I'm going to go over them with you, so you can go back and refer to these on on your own, and and go into depth on each one of these things. So if we start with it here, podcast number four goes over slow points, talks all about the slow points of the corner. Podcast nine goes over brake usage and brake adjustability. Podcast eleven goes over turn in rate and turn in point. Fourteen, how fast should my throttle hand move? There's a ton of report cards in there for you. Um, yeah, you do remember the report card podcast uh, that we had. 22 exit corners, 23 entry corners, 24 balance corners and vital points. 33, is it throttle through a corner or break through a corner? 54, feeling fast versus being fast. Wow, that is a great one to listen to for, the, for this particular topic. 59, track dynamics and how that applies. 65, breaks for a corner. How do we know if we need brakes for a corner? And 66, podcast 66, how we look at double apex corners. So we have so much information out there, out there for you. And what this podcast was about was hopefully dispelling um, a bunch of um, <laughs> a bunch of ambiguous terms that basically don't mean shit. And uh, I wanted to be able to to break that down a little bit for you, and then go back and reference reference what those really all uh, are about with those other podcasts. So there you go. Got a little bit of homework on this one, and um, I hope you can share that as well. Copyright 2019, Ken Hill Coaching, all rights reserved.